When I say the words Picoscope Automotive, a number comes to mind that probably has three, potentially four figures and a dollar sign in front of it. However, Picoscope do make cheaper oscilloscopes aimed at the rest of the electronics world. Let's see if the entry level scope Picoscope make is any good for helping you diagnose automotive faults. So Picoscope have had their automotive oscilloscope out for some time now. Uh, it's a really impressive bit of kit. You know, get, you get the nice box with all the different accessories in. It's got four channels. You've got your amp clamps and all the probes to go with it. Uh, the Picoscope automotive software has some nice little things in there to help you with automotive specific issues. And also they have, you know, a range of accessories to, to go with that. Those of you that have looked at buying that, Picoscope automotive kit will know that it goes well into the thousands of pounds. However, Picoscope do have an entry level scope and it's very affordable. It's the 2000 series Picoscope. Um, what we're going to do is have a look at this today and see how it fares up compared to the Picoscope automotive kit. Now you can get this for around just over 100, 100 pounds. There are a few versions of it. I've got the 10 megahertz version here. I can't see why you would need to get any more than that but let's put it on the car and have a look so links for all the products we're going to look at today can be found below in the description okay so let's have a quick look at what we've got inside this box of the 2000 series picoscope as i mentioned i got the 2204a which is the 10 megahertz scope two channels with the waveform generator as well on there so inside here we've got a quick start guide which is just a generic quick start guide uh, it's the same one that you seem to have to get with all the other oscilloscopes pico cell uh, we've got the unit here so it's really quite a nice small scope there so channel a channel b we've also got the usb cable in there connecting up to the computer and there's also two leads now these leads are they're okay they work they're just not really what you need for uh, automotive applications they're more for high frequency uh, inputs uh, it's just got like the little hook tool on there you've then got the like little probe there but you can't fit like a a back probe on there with the banana connectors what you want to do is get yourself some of these these are the Hantec automotive uh, probes and they're really quite cheap and you can fit your back probes and crocodile connectors on there quite easily you can also piggyback them onto each other so you you know if you were using two probes and you wanted to take one earth reference point you could just connect them together like that connected up and ready to go the first thing i usually do with the oscilloscope is check the battery voltage and there we go we've got a flat line at 12 volts we're ready to go so i've got quite a small crocodile clip i'm going to take a ground reference on the egr cooler on the side of the engine we'll start with an air mass meter reading be very careful when using these type of back probes you don't push too far in and damage the connector so we're looking at the air mass frequency modulated signal you can see on there it's flicking up between 5 and 10 volt uh, setting on the auto mode so what we're going to do is flick it up to 5 volts to make sure we get a constant pattern on the screen and uh, the trigger's already set you see the little yellow dot in the middle there and it's really quite stable and actually looks quite the same as what you'd see on the pico automotive uh, scope So now we'll take a measurement of the high pressure fuel sensor on the fuel rail. Um, this measurement's going to be quite a bit slower than what we just looked at with the air mass meter. And we'll look at taking a measurement over a period of seconds whilst we rev up the engine and watch the signal change. So we've got our signal now. You can see it there on the screen, but the scope is set up way too fast at the minute. We're just, a, just below one volt. So we're going to change the time setting. So we take a picture over a longer period of time and there we go let's rev up the engine and see what happens so that's really quite similar to what we would see on the pico automotive scope so now let's have a look at some canvas so i'm going to take can reading off the powertrain can from under the e-box uh, off the engine control module i've now set up channel a and channel b I've got the ground connectors piggybacked onto each other, so we're sharing a ground. And I'm going to use channel A for can low and channel B for can high. 
So we've got a pattern up here. We just need to sort the ground out there. It's not quite uh, secured there, the ground. Once we've got the ground sorted, we'll also turn on channel B. So we get the two patterns up there. That's excellent. So it's flicking over onto overrange a bit. So we'll, we'll put the voltage up a little bit, maybe to 10 volts, uh, just to stop that from happening. Now we'll just reduce the time scale so we get a better picture of what we should be seeing for a CAN signal. It opens up there, we've already got our trigger set. A little bit too far. There we go, we've got a full package there. So now we can hit stop down at the bottom and we've got our cursors on the side. So all you do is drag the, the blue box down for channel A and you drag the red box down for channel B and we get a little measurement box open up in the center of the screen at the top there. So and the same for the time cursors, you can just drag them from the sides, the little white boxes, they start off in the bottom left hand corner. So all in all it's really quite a good scope for the money. Um, I know if you want to measure things like injectors, uh, you might have to go for the automotive version of the uh, oscilloscope and pay that bit more money. But you know, for measuring everything else, like your CAN signals, PWM, frequency modulation, sensors, the longer term stuff. So when you're looking measuring over seconds rather than you know milliseconds, nanoseconds, it's it's, it's really quite good.